Welcome in, everybody, to Betting Pros right here. It is me, Joey P, Joe Pizapia, and today we're going to talk about the PGA Championship, which begins in just a day or so. Here we are on the precipice of another major here in golf, and we have a great guest for you from Sportsbook Wire. He's the one, the only, Esten McLaren. Esten, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out to talk to us today, and uh, we're going to dig into some of the uh, the favorites, some of the props, and some of the stuff that I've seen that you've heard as you put on Betting Pros as well. So are you excited for another major, my friend? Very excited. Excited for every major ever, but this week especially, you know, Wednesday, the videos coming in on Twitter, these practice rounds, and the guys having trouble just before the show started. I just saw Rory put one in the water on 17, three wood off the tee on a par three into a 20-mile-per-hour win. So if he's doing that at a course where he's had unbelievable success before, uh, it's going to be – quite a tournament and you know we write up all this betting content we do these podcasts you know we can't really do much about a 20 mile per hour wind into <laughs> a, a water, uh, par three with the water hazard in front but no well. not 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 a fun day at the office there with that kind of a wind but let, look let's talk about the course first because i think that's always the thing we want to break down then we'll kind of get to the weather as well so it's in south carolina rory obviously is one of the headliners of the event and um you know, when you're looking at right now this course, does this course favor guys like Rory? Is there somebody else in this field that you feel like from the course before you even get into the wind factors and some other of the elements in there? Who do you think it really favors just from, let's say, a perfect setting? It favors the long hitters. This is the longest major venue there's ever been on the PGA Tour, 7,876 yards. There's five par fours between 450 and 500 yards, two longer than that. So driving distance, strokes gained off the green, but also par four efficiency, 450 to 500. You know, it always seems like a cop out to say the longest hitters have an advantage. That's not really the case anymore in today's day and age of golf where everyone can hit it long. But when you're hitting it long and into a 10, 20 mile per hour wind, that length matters. And mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be something. And, Outside of the length, obviously, I'm going to, and more for my long shot picks, I'm looking to guys around the green, short game, uh, sand play. There's bunkers guarding almost every green on this course, sand, uh, sand dunes as well. So outside of the long hitters, you got to focus on that short game and the sand play, and that brings a lot of long shots back into play here. All right, so I know one of the long shots you like is, uh, well, I don't know how much of a long shot he really is, a plus 800, Brooks Kepka, one of the better golfers out there. Uh, we know McElroy somewhere in that plus 200 range over on betting pros, and if you're trying to make sure that you, you get the consensus, you can always head over to betting pros to get those numbers, but who are some of the other long shots? Because I know last time when we talked about the Masters, we talked with Pat Mayo about taking shots on some of these guys, because that's how you make money in golf wagering. Who are some of these long shots now that you think go to the forefront because of the elements and because of the course and that combination coming to fruition. Well, as you mentioned with Brooks Kepka, you know, absolutely bizarre to have to call him a long shot, but a plus 5,000, he pretty much is. And, mm -hmm. you know, he missed the cut last week at at and Byron Nelson. But he, if you look at the strokes gain stats for that tournament, he did well in the areas that he needs to this week. He was near the top of the field and strokes gained around the green and strokes gained off the tee. Looking forward to that translating at this course at a very high number. We saw him at the Waste Management Phoenix Open earlier this year with a number way higher than he should have, and he went out and won the thing. So that very much can happen again. Obviously, a lot longer than that. Um, we have Shane Lowry. He's hovering around plus 8,000, plus 9,000, depending on where you're looking. To me, this course has a lot of similarities to Royal Port Rush, where he won the Open Championship in 2019. And, you know, maybe not so much in hole design, that sort of thing, but a course that runs along the coast of the ocean, just like Royal Port Rush in Northern Ireland. If that weather gets bad and tough, that favors a guy like Shane Lowry. Longer than that, even still. South Africans really popping to me this week. Christian Bezwiedenhout and Dylan Fratelli in particular. Guys, great short game and great sand players. Fratelli is also top 10 on tour in driving distance as well. So he's a dark horse here. He had a top five finish tied for fifth in the fall Masters. Didn't do so well in April, but you know, he, he's competed in a major before. So that's good enough for me this week. And you know, with that wind and 
whatever weather we get, kind of leveling things off between the long hitters. If guys have to play that shorter, more controlled game, I'm going to trust in his play in the sand and around the greens. Now, let's talk about some of those top 10 finishers and kind of change from who's going to win the tournament to some other fun props and some other fun wagers that we got now. Now, you like Fratelli also to finish in that top 10, correct? Is that still the case now with the weather? I know this write-up was a few days ago, but again, when the elements start to creep in, just want to make sure we're still on the same path here with some of these guys, or perhaps there's a few other guys that you start to see now on that landscape that you think could finish in that top 10 that really could make someone some money. Yeah, Fratelli at top 10 is worth a shot for me at the odds. Probably a safer play as a top 20. Shane Lowry just mentioned, I like him as a top 10 play as well. And then Brooks Kepka again, we mentioned his outright odds are far too high. His odds for placings are also higher than they should be. So a guy who missed the cut at the Masters, missed the cut last week at a lesser tournament. You know, if you can get good value on him for a top five, even the top 10 finish, you got to jump at it. Uh, <laughs> Patrick Cantlay, even as a, as a top 10 guy with plenty of top 10 finishes and majors, you know, I, I like that at plus value. So if you, you need to hedge against these outrights, whether you're picking among the favorites or the long shots, it's, you know, arguably never seen a better time to you know, load up on these top five, top 10 finishes rather than just throwing out outright shots. Well, here's a question for you, too. Is there anybody right now that you think is a trap where you see it's a, maybe it's a bigger name on the board that you think maybe the course doesn't really suit as much as some other people might think or the odds makers might think or also with the elements that might be at a disadvantage? Because I think obviously now we're starting to see a little bit of a different turn here as you're kind of pointing out to us. Is there somebody that you would stay away from because of it? You think, you know what, maybe this guy isn't a top 10 finisher or maybe somebody who might be, you know, one of the favorites, quote unquote, that might not be the best wager. Yeah, they're, you know, the odds aren't horribly wrong for them, but two guys who are going to get the public attention that they shouldn't, Hideki Matsuyama and Colin Morikawa, the Masters and PGA Championship uh, PGA Championship winner, respectively. Uh, you know, this course just doesn't suit them well. It's so much longer than TPC Harding Park for Colin Morikawa. He's not a long hitter. He's first on tour in strokes and approach, and that is a key here, but... He just doesn't have the length to contend if that's going to be the issue on Saturday, Sunday. And then Hideki Matsuyama, we saw him return to play last week at the AT Byron and Nelson, a top 40 finish, but just really made a mess of things around the green and putting was very inconsistent. We saw him missing within 10 feet. He gained strokes with the flat stick for the week, but uh, the play around the green wasn't there for him. And, you know, obviously he came out and put everything together to win the Masters. I just don't see that happening here where weather is going to be a much bigger factor. You have a, an interesting uh, take here, too, on best finishing position where you have Hideki Matsuyama at minus 110 versus Patrick Cantley at uh, minus 110. That's over at MGM Sportsbook. What's your, uh, what's your feelings on this one here? Yeah, I really like Patrick Cantley this week. He hasn't been great this year. He won the Zozo Championship last fall, but the 2021 form just hasn't been there consistently coming off a couple of missed cuts at the Masters included. and But this course suits him well. He's, you know, very, well, he's fourth, I think, on tour in strokes gained around the green, and he's averaging over a half stroke per round off the tee as well. So a guy who can hit it long and has that short game, you know, that's the great combo for me. So he's the only player on tour and in this field who's averaging 0.5 strokes per round around the green and off the tee. So... If he can put that together, um, we're getting a high number because of the recent miscuts. I'm going to overlook those. In your opinion, too, uh, who's coming into this tournament very hot? Like, who do you like in terms of how they're playing right now? I know you kind of talked about, you know, Kepka, but is there somebody else, too, that you think is kind of trending in the right direction here? Because uh, we all know, like every other sport, you know, typically there's a, you know, catching lightning in a bottle or somebody who hits a hot streak. Who do you think right now is playing very well that we should keep our eyes on maybe as well this weekend? The obvious name is Jordan Spieth. And, you know, there's been no hotter player in golf this year with the win, a bunch of top tens, even another one last week. So, yeah, it, it's tough to bet against Jordan Spieth whenever he's playing like he is. But you now this is a guy, even still as good as he has been, he's still erratic with the driver. And I'm going to be interested to see how this course plays for a guy like that this week. I'm fading Jordan Spieth entirely, and I'm 
I have to live and die by that. So the <laughs> driver is still his biggest problem. If you have to pinpoint a problem in his 21 game and, you know, there's wide fairways here at the ocean course, but if that wind picks up, they may not be long enough for a guy like him, especially if he's already spraying it. And then that wind catches a ball that's headed left or right. It's going to be trouble for him. All right, let's get to some fun wagers too. Will there be a playoff? What are your thoughts on this one? I see on DraftKings you get a plus 400 on the sports book there for the yes. Is that something that you're on board with? Yeah, if you look back at that 2012 PGA Championship leaderboard, really the only one we have for Keough Island, after Rory McIlroy winning by eight strokes, that leaderboard bunched up in a hurry. We had David Lynn, for anyone who remembers him, at five under. Uh, solo runner up but then after that there are you know 18 players between one under par and four under par so yeah if you take out a performance like Rory McIlroy had you know it's going to be close and I think plus 400 <laughs> for the value for a playoff that's good enough for me and then when it comes down to wire to wire winner do you think right now that is a a wager you want to get in on or not because obviously the element sometimes can really kind of make certain days erratic uh, especially what time people are teeing off too, uh, because that's what groupings everyone's in might affect them very differently in the morning versus as you get later to the afternoon. So is that now become a wager to stay away from or something that you actually think you can make money on? No, I like this one, especially when you look at the Thursday morning tea times, you have a power group of McElroy, Kepka and uh, Morikawa, I believe. Uh, no, sorry, Thomas McElroy and uh, Kepka. So, yeah, you look at those three, three of the top players in the world. If one of them goes out and posts a low score Thursday morning before the wins potentially get much worse, then those guys are going to be tough to beat come Friday and the weekend. So, yeah, that's the angle you have to play. And it kind of piggybacks off of the playoff prop as well. If, you know, if any of those guys or somebody else goes out and posts a low round Thursday morning, this is going to be a tough course and tough conditions to play catch up on. <laughs> All right, there you go. Before we uh, before we part ways with the Eston, again, you can follow him over on the Twitter machine, over at Eston McLaren on Twitter, and uh, please check out his work not only on betting pros, but also check out his work at Sportsbook Wire. Eston, um, what are your other parting shots here, other things that you look at the board that you feel like uh, there's opportunity from the wagering side, or maybe even from the DFS side too, if people want to get involved with that. How do you kind of see the rest of this weekend now as we're getting closer to uh, everyone teeing off here after the practice round? Yeah, so for DFS especially, I would diversify the the Thursday tea times. You got to have some more early morning and some late afternoon. I think last I checked the weather for Kiowa, uh, the weather or the winds are down early in the morning and then down again late afternoon so you gotta try to split your six-man team whoever's going to catch either end of those waves i would stay away from kind of that midday tier but yeah it's you know it, it's an ocean course so that weather forecast it may not mean much and that's that's <laughs> why you got to just kind of spread it around do those 150 lineups or ever many you're able to do and get the best mix of tea times throughout the day and then obviously things can turn around on friday as well but yeah uh to mention again for those lineups the favorites are going to be the long hitters their price is such at DraftKings, FanDuel, or wherever and then a lot of the values are in those good short game guys and the bottom tiers that you can save your money there so i i like that as a split as well and you know kind of hedging Either way, in both DFS and in betting, I, I like long hitters and the best short game guys. There you go. That's a really good approach. So hopefully all the approaches look as good as yours do uh, this week as we go ahead. Should be an interesting week of golf nonetheless. Eston, I want to thank you again so much for your time and hopping in with us. Let's talk a little PGA. I hope everybody feels that they are confident now to go out there and go make some fun wagers over that. And again, make sure you're following us over at Betting Pros and check out all the great content at Betting Pros, including all of our consensus over there as well. Again, follow him on Twitter at Eston McLaren. And of course, you can follow me at Joe Pisa PS17. That'll do it for us, but the story of the game goes on. We'll see you next time, kids.